שלום, ישר עם קרייס קולס. שלום, יש לנו מוסר עם קרייס קולס. Ready to start here in a minute. שלום ישראל מוסיין קרייס בלס אורייט, אני חושב שכל אחד יש לנו טוב מורנו זה אורלי 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 סטיילי ברד מוסיין קרייס בלס אני חושב שאני יכול לראות את הגלס All right, Israel, let's rise and face these prayers. All right. Let's 
Lord, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for your love, mercy, and grace that you've bestowed upon our nation, Lord. We pray you continue to show mercy, Lord. We pray for those who are sick or with child of mongers, Lord. You continue to bless them, Lord. You continue to strengthen them, Lord. Those, Lord, who are weak in faith, we pray you strengthen their faith, Lord. We pray you continue to rise up, raise up our leadership, Lord, to continue building up all our faith, Lord. Continue blessing our leaders, Lord, our bishops, with their health and strength, Lord. The deacons, the captains, the officers, soldiers, brothers, and sisters, we pray you continue to keep those, Lord, who sincerely want to walk up right before thee and do thy bidding, Lord. Keep thy commandments, keep the unity. Continue to keep the vision, Lord. The scripture says, without the vision, the people perish, Lord. We have a vision here in IUIC, Lord, by the leaders that you set up to continue to build our nation, Lord. With that exceedingly great army that you called us to be, to rule this planet, Lord. All these things, bless and this unto Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. All right, hey, shalom, misery, and most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. Officer Micah here out of Houston camp. I'll come with a little class today, man. Hey, uh, something, something um, I want to teach on today. Kind of been, kind of been uh, on my mind all week. Um, not only with the men's conference, but also coming back to Houston. Um, just, you know, constantly thinking about how we should, like, reverence our leadership. Um, you know, fulfill the role, what the Most High called you to do in this body. Because remember, it's one body, but many members. Everybody can't be the head. Everybody can't be the, the best teacher, you know, whatever the case may be. You have to do what you called in this body to do. It's plain and simple, you know. Um, I was, um, Meditating on self-examination, because uh, that's what we're really supposed to always reflect on. we always supposed to reflect on that. Hey, um, I want to read the definition. All right, so I'm going to read the definition of self-examination. Uh, the definition is the study of one's own behavior and motivations of course what i'm looking for in this is your behavior your behavior how are we supposed to conduct ourselves after learning the truth you know after learning who we are you know it goes into your self-examination of course we all know examine ourselves rather you be reprobate we always you know, reference self-examination to that, to that scripture. But hey, let's read this one real quick. This is um, Sirach chapter 18, verse 20. Because the self-examination really, um, you're supposed to like continue to fine-tune yourself. You know, constantly supposed to get better. Um, one of the captains here always give this example. How do you think LeBron got to where he at? How do you think Michael Jordan got to where he at? They always practiced. They always went and did those things that was needed for them to get better. All right. What's the same thing with us? We examine ourselves and we come back in fellowship. We examine ourselves and, you know, we uh, come back and implement what, uh, you know, charity or whatever the case may be. It all goes into examining yourself. What are you putting for? All right. So it's uh, Sirach chapter 18 and verse 20. Before judgment, examine thyself. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Now, when it comes to finding mercy, remember, um, that's what Christ had brought for us. Grace and mercy he had brought to us. So now, with that mercy being applied to us as a nation, these are things that we should be, um, these are things that we should be doing. Like what? Here's one. Uh, Galatians 5 and 14. Because remember, 
with one body with many members, that mean that um, it's just not one individual. I'm going to give an example on that as well. All right, so this is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14. 11. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knitted together as one man. All right, so if we knitted together as one man, what one man are we supposed to be knitted together? We're making up the body of Christ. So it's not about us. It's about allowing Christ to use us. Paul gave plenty of examples about that as well. Here's one right here. Go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. This is one of the scriptures I always think about when I want to deny myself, all right, from, you know, my own desires. If it's contrary to um, the commandments, if it's contrary to the movement that we have here, because it's much bigger than me, all right? This is uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's the point right there. That Christ lives in me. So, if Christ lives in me, and Christ is living in all those that are gathered together with one mind, that makes up the body. Watch this. I'm going to read it again. I am crucified with Christ, and but lest I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I don't live according to my standards what I desire to do. My, our desires should be um, following the commandments as it is written, being on one accord to bring forth the kingdom. How you think they um, brought the city Jericho down when they surrounded it in Joshua's time? It's on one mind, one accord. You know, um, so many different examples uh, when the Maccabees encouraged um, the people, you know, they was on one mind. He stirred up their spirit. 
it, and, and they fought courageously, all right, to over overcome the enemies. Uh, same thing today. How are we going to get the kingdom back? By being on one mind, one accord. Enough being sealed, being on one mind, one accord will bring forth the kingdom. Because that's what we have to do now. It talks about, um, let's read this one real quick. Uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So his will is going to be done in earth as it is in heaven. Everybody's on one accord, right? Everybody's playing their position, playing their role. You know, I get it that we're uh, in the times of repenting. We got to constantly put off that old man, all right? But we shouldn't continue to um, stumble at the same things over and over. That should never be the case. We should be growing, all right? Growing in faith, growing in wisdom, right? And remember, watch this. Let's read um, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Remember, uh, saying it was one body, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start at verse 4. Mm, yeah. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are Differences of administrations, but the same Lord, you see? So that's the point right there. There are many administrations, but the same Lord. We have different things that we do. Just like uh, here, like you talk about the IT, you talk about the hospitality, you talk about many, many different gifts people have. Some brothers know how to lead the, um, the cadences really well. Um, you know, some people know how to uh, have hospitality. Some people have, you know, the gift of uh, teaching. You know, all of these different things make up the body. We cannot envy, bite, and devour each other because we're not operating like the next person. We have different administrations. All right. Uh, verse 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same, it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. You see, so A, hey, it's given to every man to profit. You're given a portion. All right. Like, for instance, uh, I'm going to hold this and go to Romans chapter 12. We're all given a portion to operate with that portion that the Most High blessed us with. This is Romans chapter 12. And start at verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. That's it right there. I mean, say no more. We all don't have the same office. You know, uh, for instance, um, like here, uh, we have some officers, um, they are over the IT. You have other officers over the young profit. You have other officers over um, uh, the school doing certain different things, the medical, you know. But we all don't have the same gift. All right. I'm going to read on a little bit more. We all don't have the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. And that's how we're knitted together. Because we're one of another. We're helping one another. Because um, if I need a, a thumbnail, I go to the other officer, a officer. 
can you uh have your team create this thumbnail you see what i'm saying uh had another incident a, a brother asking me about someone medical hey reach out to the medical on that that's that's not my office all right so we these are things how we help each other because we're one body operating together because if one person try to do everything it wouldn't work it would not work uh, that's that's the same predicament that moses was in that's the same predicament that we're in today when we're over these little sanctuaries one person cannot run it all it takes a body all right and that's why you're here that's why you're put in place that's why you are being raised up and groomed to to help the body all right uh, i'm gonna read on uh, verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. That's what I wanted out of that. According to the portion of faith that you're given. So you will have to operate that office with the portion of faith that you were given. You can't be given small faith and... Um, you know, uh, you're out there trying to teach on the street and get confounded. No, don't do that. If that's not your office, don't do it. If your office is doing things behind the scene, play your role. Don't try to jump out in front of uh, uh, that type of fighting and you're not built for it. Um, just like the men, the young men in Maccabees, they want to go get them a name. This is not that type of party. You don't want to be operating like that, trying to go get you a name doing things that are not in your comfort zone, doing things that the Most High did not call you to do. All right, so you want to make sure that you're doing your office. Hey, um, I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians. I remember asking, um, I asked a brother that before and I, asked a and I asked a sister this before. What is your gift? Watch this. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, adversities, diversities of tongues. Now, um, you may not be a teacher, you may not be an evangelist, but guess what else was just written right here? Helps. You might be a help. Remember what Christ said. The harvest is plenty, but the labors are fruit. Helps. Putting your hand to the plow. Helping build the kingdom. So that's why you got to examine yourself. To see, are you doing those things? Are you examining yourself to help build a nation? Hey, we all we all have to take uh, responsibility in that. All right. Remember, we can't be selfish in this truth because it's not about me. Um, who had a selfish moment? Um, I always think about Jonah. I always think about Jonah, the way um, he operated before he went into the fish belly. How did he operate? He was like, nope, I ain't doing it. Hey, go tell these people to repent. I ain't doing it. He ran. He went the opposite way. Thought he couldn't, he thought he didn't have to do uh, what the Most High God bid him to do. So Jonah ended up doing it anyway. But he had a mindset not to do it. Well, when it comes to us, we have to examine ourselves and see that we're not doing that, kicking against the grain, going against uh, despising governments. You know, we can't, those are those type of spirits we can't have. We can't do that. Guess what that brings up? Watch this. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 4. When we want to do what we want to do, this is what to do. 
Ephesians 4. And we'll start at. Uh, 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's what could build up in you for wanting to go the opposite way or because of jealousy, envy. All those things can build up bitterness. Right? Those things can be built up over time. It, those things don't just happen overnight. Those things take time to uh, build up in a person. So with that being said, you have to seek counsel. You have to continue to dive into the Bible in order to get these type of spirits and thoughts off of you. The reason why I say that is because um, the scriptures tell us don't counsel ourselves. All right, comfort you one another with these words. That's what the scriptures tell us to do. All right, that's our guideline. That's what lead us. This is supposed to be our motivation. All right, to be, to continue to be uh, that better person, to continue to showing by your actions that you're knitted together, that you're on one mind, one accord. All right, let's get that real quick. First Corinthians. Start at 1 and verse 6. Uh, let's see. All right. First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse six even as the testimony of christ was confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our lord jesus christ who shall also uh, okay yeah who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. For God is for no God is faithful, excuse me, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. But that ye perfectly be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgments. So what did he say? He said a couple of things right there. He would that because he want you to be blameless and that we was called unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So how would those things take place? You have to constantly be groomed. You have to constantly be uh, encouraged. Remember, um, the scriptures talk about how we should. Reverend God, priest, how we should um, uh, wear out the footsteps. You see what I'm saying? So all of these different things that we're supposed to be applying to showing that we don't want to call it. Um, Joshua, I mean, um, Caleb, yeah. Caleb and Joshua, they always was right there with Moses. They wore out his footsteps, you know. Um, Elijah and Elisha. Two, two of my favorite prophets, you know, um, Elijah was right there, you know, wanting to get what uh, Elisha had, okay? Um, so that's the same way we got to be. We got to wear out the footsteps. We got to be ready to be servants, all right, uh, in order to continue to uh, show the most high that, look, we're serious about this truth. All right, and that goes for each and every individual. All right, uh, hey, from now, go to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians five, and let's see, five and start at twelve.
All right, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. You see, so these are things we got to be mindful of. When a person comes through the door and um, they see how things are being operated, they'd be like, okay, yeah. First they see it online. They want to come in and come and join. So once you get here, guess what? The train was already moving. The train was already moving. So that puts you in the state to where you want to get on and do what? You want to get on and help. So if you want to get on and help, then how in the midst of that, bitterness get built up or envy or strife? These are, that's why we got to start examining ourselves. We should never operate like that. We should always examine ourselves and get it right. Shake it off before it's too late. All right, I'm going to read on. Um, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Okay, so we have to esteem them very high for their work's sake. Always compliment them. Always being thankful and grateful that you was able to become and be led by such leaders. That's what it's all about. Showing that we don't want to call. Because guess what? When the Most High raised you up, guess what you're going to be expecting? You're going to be expecting the same thing. You're going to want that respect. You're going to want that uh, those kind greetings. The scriptures talk about those things. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Uh, Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 5. We're going to get right back to the point. Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 5. Sweet language will multiply friends, and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. So when you come in like that, that's you're supposed to continue down that path. But grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But keep that kind greetings. Hey, remember, we just read that there be no divisions among you. There shouldn't be any divisions among us, Israel. All right. So from there, let's go back. Let's go back to... First uh, Thessalonians 5 and read 13 again. And to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. That's another heavy thing. To be at peace among yourselves. Um, you know, just like um, when you think about, once again, the small sanctuaries. Um, the bishops, the deacons, they're not in every sanctuary. But Paul was writing a letter because he wasn't in every sanctuary. He said to be at peace among yourselves. That's the same message that our leadership passed down to us in our sanctuaries in different cities. To be at peace among ourselves. All right? If, hey, if we say we follow the Bible, we got to follow it to the T. Read 13 again. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Examine yourself. Are you doing that? Okay. Um, in love for the work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, to warn them that are unruly. So this is what Paul said. We have to warn them. Guess what comes with that? Correction. So that's a part of a leader's role. So he has something for the body. And he has something for the leaders. As he continued to let us know how we should be carrying ourselves. All right. 14 again. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. And that's where the mercy come in at. A brother first offense, he don't get thrown out of the body. You know, he be warned, he be admonished. A sister first offense, she don't know. Because we do everything how the um how the scripture says to do. All right, we admonish them. We 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 talk to the unruly. Right? All right. And then 
course, you continue down that path. Look, you're going to have to go. All right. Uh, verse 15. So we have to be patient toward all men, to the feeble-minded. Um, you know, that's where, it, like I said before, it comes to the comforting one another. Uh, Galatians 5 and 15, fulfilling the law, loving your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So that will uh, keep us from um, not being on one accord. All right? Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Uh if somebody treats you a certain way, the scriptures say don't start treating them that same way. No. Of course, what are we supposed to do? Approach one another, talk with one another, work it out. Right? Some people may not never see eye to eye, but guess what? For the body's sake, you will work together. That's how this thing works. All right? Verse 15 again. Seeing that none render evil for evil unto any man, but every but every follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you concerning you he wants you to give thanks for everything always rejoice and pray without ceasing you see how we supposed to examine ourselves and apply these things that they're to constantly build us up build up our faith build up our walk our characteristic our character all right these are things we have to examine ourselves on verse 18 again and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit quench not the spirit all right so when it says quench not the spirit quench not the spirit watch this quench not the spirit because it was given to you we're going to read that real quick 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, quench not the spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 21. Should have got that for a scribe this morning. The brother on the scribe. Hope somebody been scribing. I know Pablo usually on here. Faithful servant. All right. Um, First Corinthians chapter two and verse twenty-one. Now he which established us with you in Christ had also anointed us, had anointed us. Excuse me. Read that again. Now he which established us with you in Christ and had anointed us is God. You see, so he let him know God working it all. And there's only one thing, right? Everybody is in Christ. Read it one more time. Now he which established us with you in Christ. So that's the whole mission. It's not about me. It's not about you. All right. It's all about our Lord and Savior who died for us. He gave the greatest sacrifice. We ain't going through nothing. The devil be playing on your mind that the world is coming to an end. Your world is coming to an end because it's not going your way. These are temptations that you have to overcome. These are trials that you have to overcome. It's not about you. It has never been about you. You were born either to serve the Most High God or to be rebellious. That's it. Remember, that's the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. Where do you come into play at? To where it's going to do your own thing. Right? Nah. Watch this. Verse 22. Who had also sealed us and had given us the earnest of the spirit in our heart. You see, so he had given us the earnest of the spirit in our heart. One might say, in my blood pumper right here in my chest. No, 
Jeremiah 4 and 14. This is what he was referring to when he had given us the spirit in our hearts. Because a lot of people may think that it was a natural heart that he's referring to and give you a feeling. Oh, you feel real good because, uh, no, 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 no. It's not this. It's not this thing in your chest. All right. Watch this. Jeremiah 4 and 14. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? So if you're gonna you're gonna wash yourself from wickedness, and then you have vain thoughts lodging within you, it's then you know exactly what your heart is. Wash your heart from these vain thoughts, it's referring to your mind. So let's go back to First Corinthians, Second Corinthians one and twenty two again. Who had also sealed us and had given the earnest of the spirit in our heart. All right, so remember, he said, don't quench it. He gave us the spirit in our heart. Let's go, let's go back to Romans. Romans chapter, no, Ephesians. Ephesians four, and we're gonna start at 30. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So it's telling you the same thing we just read in first and second Corinthians. That he had given us the earnest of the spirit. Uh, let me read it one more time. Let me read it one more time. Second Corinthians 1 and 22. We had sealed us. And given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So he had sealed us and had given us the earnest of the spirit in our heart. All right. So now back to Ephesians uh, 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby ye are sealed. We are sealed with it. He's given it to us. We understand it. We know the mission. We know what God has planned for us. We know our nationality now. We know who we are. We know what we should and should be eating. You see, so that's what we're sealed with. Uh, real quick. Of course, I had to get the concrete Isaiah to top it off. Letting us know what we are sealed with. All right, so book of Isaiah. Chapter 8 and verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. So he sealed us with this. All right. And of course, uh, when we jump over to chapter 5 in Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 26. And he said, wash you, make you clean, um, put away the wickedness, right? That evil that we were doing, Ephesians 5, 26, that you might sanctify it and cleanse it and wash it with the water by the word. That's how we're washed and we're cleansed with this word. All right. So it's not about you. It's not about you. We have to put off um, this selfishness that we have. Hey, we picked up these characteristics in the world. You know, with the Beyonce's and the, and the Jay-Z and all these different people in the world that have that type of mindset that it's all about themselves. And guess what? Then you have people flocking to them and idolizing them and all those different things. In the Bible, we always want to be like our forefathers. What about being like the man or woman of God? What about that? Is anybody trying to follow those characteristics, those type of people? Right. Um, here's another characteristic, James. Real quick, while I'm thinking about it, James three, and start at seventeen. Let me see where we at. Right. 
book of James chapter 3 and verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Is that what you want to fall in at? This the type of wisdom you want. You want to be easily approachable. You want to make peace. That's a key word. Make peace. Because if there is any kind of envy or strife going on, you have to be the one to apply the scriptures. You see that? All right, we can't be selfish. Look, a uh, couple selfish people that had uh, envy or, um, yeah, let's stick with the word envy. Envy or bitterness. Watch this. Um, what did I write down? I wrote down Saul. Of course, we know how Saul, um, the scriptures talk about how he became David's enemy from that point on. How he was jealous of it. David smoked. Uh, 10,000 and saw his only thousand. All these type of things, you know, people go off of when, you know, the most I set you up in a certain place. You see how easily you can get off course and not be focused with what God called you to do? God had called you to be king. What, what are you worried about? All right. Lack of confidence. Lack of faith. Right? Never, um, Never had that type of um, that that humility within himself to be confident in who he was. Same thing with Joseph brothers. They were the they were older. They was out already doing things. All these like they had things going on. But guess what? They had to be jealous and envy and despise Joseph. You see what could happen. If they wasn't, if you're not working together, these are the type of things you do. All right. Um, let's go to Sirach. Sirach 14. Sirach chapter 14. So that's the type of characteristic you want to have. All right. Sirach chapter 14. Start at verse 1. Here's another example of, um, of you examining yourself. Watch this. Blessed is the man that had not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sin. You see? So, because remember, a just man falls seven times. And if you wrong your brother, you go to your brother. All of these things, you got to apply these things. All right, you just can't allow yourself to continue to build up with the bitterness, the hatred. Oh, let me hold this real quick and go to um, First Peter chapter two. We cannot hold on to these things. That's why it was constantly said by all the the disciples, all of those who have written Peter, Paul, James, John. All of them wrote these type of things. First John, Second John, Third John. They, he wrote it. He wrote it in all the Bible, in all his uh, epistles on how we should love one another, forgive one another, don't be like children. Watch this. Uh, First Peter chapter two and verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings, we have to constantly. Fight and put these things away. You can't operate as a body like that. Remember, it talks about in Second Corinthians, uh, no, First Corinthians chapter twelve about no schism. There should be no schism, no division. We all, we all don't want to call it. You can't fight and devour each other. All right, um, back to Sirach, fourteen and one. Blessed is the man that had not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. Verse two, blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him. That's key right there. You know when you're doing something 
that's not right out of character all right so that's when you have to examine yourself it's something i always run into your mind like no nah, i shouldn't do that no nah, i shouldn't say that no i'm not gonna tell that person that you see what i'm saying all of these things run through your mind it's up to you how you're gonna react to it but you're gonna say it anyway because i don't care or i'm gonna do it anyway you see what i'm saying so those are things you have to examine yourself on. Remember that you had to slip with your mouth. Blessed is the man who had done that. Read verse 2 again. Blessed is he whose conscience had not condemned him and who is not fallen from the hope of the Lord. So if you had not fallen from the hope of the Lord, it's time to repent. It's time to get it right. Or it's time to continue striving. Drop down chapter 4, just popped up. Chapter 4 and verse 28. So rock 4 and 28. Matter of fact, I'm going to start up a little bit. Um, I'm going to start at... Verse 25. And no wise speak against the truth, but be admonished of the error of thine ignorance. You see? Because remember, in Thessalonians it said we can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That's all we can do. We can only do for that. And nothing you can do to hinder the most high plan. To raise up the nation, being one mind, one accord, when we're gathering together, when we're breaking bread. What, where's your mindset at? Where's your mindset? Are you really on one accord in there? Or do the most I have to weed you out? All right. Verse 25 again. And know why I speak against the truth, but be admonished of the error of the, thine ignorance. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins because we was just reading over in 14 that you hadn't been um pricked with the multitude of sins so that's why i said you got to confess it that's why that's how you won't fall from the grace all right uh, verse 26 be not ashamed to confess thy sin and force not the course of the river you can't force nothing you can't force the most high hand to move when you want him to move. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Remember the scriptures talk about in Isaiah. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens is from the earth. Is my ways from your ways. So look. We can't force the most high to do something that you want him to do. But then when he do do something. Oh the most high always on time. So when it benefits you. It's right on time. But when it don't. Uh, when it's not according to when you want it done, then you know you all. You, uh, how do you say it? you got you got you got your mind scrambling all over the place? Let me say it like that. Nah, everything's works for the Most High. Whatever He wants to do, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. He said it. It's already been prophesied. It's just what? How are you going to do? What are you going to fall into play at? Is your name going to be written in that book? Or you gonna is he gonna say, oh, well done, my servant? How is well done? Because you did those things that were pleasing unto him. Hey, remember uh, the parable about uh how they went out in the field, um the twelfth hour, third hour, ninth hour, sixth hour. They came in at a different time to go and do the labor. And then you cannot look and say, Well, they only been here so long, but they only came to labor for so long no it's not your that's not your bidding your bidding is to do the work that's what you were called for if if, if some are bidding in and they um never have to go to camp don't worry about that just go to camp and do your thing if some come in and they never get a chance to go do it but they have to go to camp or they never get a chance to go to camp, but they're always on IT or always on security. Do your part. Somebody might come through that whoever really didn't care about being on security and, and something happened to the women and children. But that's why you're there. Do your part. 
all right? One body, many members, examine yourself on these things, all right? Um, where was I? Sirach. I don't know how to get up here. Sirach chapter 4, verse 26 again. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins and force not the course of the river. Um, when you're when you're buffered, when you're corrected, the most I told you how to how to handle it. You know, he said this thing worthy. Matter of fact, let's get this real quick. Because some people seem to know the scriptures, but they don't apply the scriptures. It's a big difference. That's why I said, What do the Lord require of you? What did he require you to do? Those are things that you have to do. Whatever he requires you to do or require us to do, we have to do those things. All right. Uh, it's 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse... 1 uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 19. I'm going to start at, you know what, I'm going to start at 18. First uh, Peter 2 and 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. A lot of people don't read that and then apply it. Not only to those who are kind to you. Hey, brother, good job. Hey, brother, go do that. You got to accept both of them. Right? Because it's a Lord. Watch this. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God, just that alone, let you know how your mindset should be. Uh, I got to read that again. For it is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, that means something rubbed you the wrong way. Something didn't sit right with you. Endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye buffet for your faults? So if you did something wrong, what, what's supposed to be the outcome? Just endure it, right? You did wrong. Ye shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. So you're supposed to take it patiently because you, yeah, you did that. You wasn't supposed to do that. But then somebody said you did something. The scriptures say take it patiently as well. Why? This is acceptable with God. That's why you're supposed to take it patiently. That's why you're supposed to take it patiently. When you're buffered for your faults, take it patiently. When you're buffered, when it's not your fault, take it patiently. That's your trials. That's you going through it. That's you uh, being refined. Okay, I'm not going to let that um, get me out the spirit. I'm not going to let that upset me. I'm not going to let that allow me to start murmuring. Those are things that you're supposed to do. That's applying the scriptures. Back to Sirach, chapter 6. No, I'm sorry, chapter 4, and verse 26 again. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins, and force not the course of the rivers. You can't make nothing go your way. A wave is going one way, and you get in trying to go the other way. You're going against it. You got to go with it. Train was already moving when you got here. You can't go against it. We're going to change everything up because I'm here now. Don't work like that. You got to go with it. Same thing. It's already moving. Constantly growing. Hey, we need brothers to come travel over here. Hey, we need sisters to come help right here. We need help with the kids. We need help with the young properties. We need help with decorations. We need help with hospitality. Just get on the train. What the hell wrong? One body moving together. Okay. 
Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. Enforce not the course of the river. Make, make not thyself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the persons of the mighty. All right. Um, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So it says, don't make thyself an underling, right? So that what is it? What is it letting you know that yes, be at peace with all men, right? But continue to keep the commandments. Don't be an underling and and uh, and all of those different things, all right? Strive for the truth unto death. I mean, you're gonna keep God's commandments, all right? Colossians is an example of you keeping God's commandments. Colossians chapter 3, start at verse 17. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and Father by him. Whatever you do, Whatever you do, you give alms. Oh, I gave, I y'all see. No, it says you did it for the Lord. Oh, I donated this because they act. No, you did it for the Lord. It'd be like people don't understand that. That's why you have to go back and examine yourself. Why, why are you really here? If you're here to help build, are you here to cause envy and strife? Examine yourself. Your character's going to show it. All right? Hey, I remember at times I had to examine myself on the way I was doing things. That's why these things resonate with me. Now I have to, now I know to go with the flow of the body and don't try to kick against the body. All right? I came here. Train's already going. Let me, let me go with it. Let me go with it. I want to be a part of the body. I want to help my nation be, get built, uh, show that we are a seemingly great army, showing that we do have discipline, all right? Showing the most high that we do care, we want to follow his instructions. That's why you're supposed to be here, okay? Um, drop down to verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not as unto men. It's a heavy statement. Paul is saying this for a reason. That we should do all things, whatever we do. All right? Do it as unto the Lord and not as unto men. All right? Um, like I say, it could be um, uh, using your vehicle to go travel somebody, help somebody move, going out of town, back in the camp equipment. So you're doing it for the Lord. All right, you've got to keep those type of things in mind. Uh, you're running errands, it's all for the Lord. You help planning something, it's all for the Lord. All right, uh, it shouldn't be a burden to do things for the body. All right, because remember, you're doing it for the Lord. All right, trying to gather people together. Um, let's go to Colossians. Yeah, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Uh, we got read in Colossians 3, chapter 2 and verse 6. Colossians 2 and 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. So walk ye in him. I got to read that again. Jack it up. As ye have therefore, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So as ye have been taught, you have been taught when you came in, it was all joy, it was all, you know, peaceful, everything was good to you. 
But then where did the envy, bitter, and strife come from? Within. Now you start seeing things you have to overcome. Because you wasn't around people like that before. Now you're around people on new moons. Now you're around people on fundraisers. Now you're around people on getting, getting together. Things rub you the wrong way. You wasn't used to that. You Be gone. You out. Hey, I'm out of this party. Hey, these ain't my uh, type of friends. But you in the truth. You can't do that. All right? You have to be built up in the faith, endeavoring to keep the unity. You know, one mind, one accord. That's what this whole thing is about. How do you think, like uh, the leadership give example all the time, how do you think Captain Shim uh, make it look so beautiful, so marvelous when all the men are one mind and one accord, when you see them marching, when you see them, when you hear them chanting? It'd be a wonderful thing, one mind, one accord. Nobody can't go out there and do their own thing. Same thing in the body, people. Same thing in the body. Other than that, you make yourself an individual life. You watch online because you don't want to uh, put your hand to the plow. Hey, I'm just telling you straight. That's what it is. All right? So that's why you don't join. I've been watching for six years. What the hell wrong with you? Why you ain't in the fight? Why you ain't building up? Why you ain't purging yourself? Why you ain't going through the fire? Matter of fact, let me read this real quick. First Corinthians, let's say chapter three. Let's see. One second. You got to go through this. If you don't go through it, if you don't go through it, man, I don't know. Uh, let's see. What's it? First Corinthians three. I'm gonna start at verse. Verse 11. For other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So that's just going, that's just going to show you how you have to be on one mind, one accord to help build. That's what he's referring to. Now, if any man build up on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work, that's the key point. Out of everything he just said, every man works shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. So if you sat at home and that was your works, that they're going to declare it. If you was in a body and your works were evil, the day are going to declare it. If you was in a body and you were sincere, the day is going to declare it. Judgment day. All right. Read 13 again. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's works what works, every man works of what sort it is. Just like the examples I just gave. You know, you're gonna show what you are in that day. You're gonna be revealed. We all are going to be revealed. Were we sincere? Were we mumble? Were we backbiters? We had hatred. Were we bitter? It's going to be revealed. All right? Um, every, man, uh, every man's work shall be tried. I'll um, read 13 again. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of of what sort it is if any man's work abide if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon it shall he shall receive a reward hmm he shall receive a reward he shall receive a reward matthew real quick matthew 16:24 I want to get right to the point of verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in his glory, shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, 
and then he shall receive every band. Then he shall reward, excuse me, he shall reward every man according to his works. That's what scripture said. When Christ returns, he's going to reward every man according to his works. And we're reading about your works that are going to be revealed. What kind of works do you have? Okay. Uh, verse, back in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 14 again. If any man works abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So you got to go through these things and keep the faith. You got to go through it. You got to get purged. You have to get purged, right? Um, yeah, that was it. That was it. That was all I wanted. So we definitely want to make sure we're examining ourselves. So when that day comes, that we receive that reward. We got to examine ourselves as a body. All right. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. We got, we have to examine ourselves. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard Let's say any time we should let them slip. So we got to give, take heed to these things, to these warnings, to these classes, different things that we hear. So we don't let them slip. We don't let the admonition slip. We don't let the correction slip because it's supposed to build you, make you better. It's helping pull off that anger you had. It's helping you pull off that slothful person that you were. That's what these things are for. All right. Um, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 6 Galatians 3 and 6 um, even as Abraham believed God and it was coming to him for righteousness that's what I want I'm sorry 6 and 3 where am I I mean 3 6 and 3 for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. He deceiveth himself. So that's why we can't think think of ourselves as it's about us. No, it's about the most high. Alright? Because we're supposed to do his commandments. That's what we were called for. Alright, when children of Israel repent and um and first Kings is for our transgressions, our sins. All right. And we want that mercy. All right. So you have to make sure that you're doing those things that are pleasing to the most high God. All right. And, and you will find that mercy. All right. We get a couple scriptures on this mercy real quick. And end it off with that. Um, go to Lamentations. Lamentations, I believe it is two, and let's see, hold up. Here we go. Lamentations three and twenty two. Lamentations three and twenty two. Um, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because he because his compassion fell not you see so it's because of his mercy we're not consumed for all the things we have done we definitely could have been out of here that's why we have to examine ourselves when we come into the body or even where you are today examine yourself it was because of lord mercy you up until this point right here so now it's time to continue to grow all right don't just say i know the truth and that's it I'm tired of working. No, we can't have the type of mindset. We got to continue to endure until the end. Get up, go get it. Get up and go get it. Continue every day. Been about to fall of business. You, you do it for your damn job. You get up and go to work every day for that. But when it comes to the truth, you want to get slack. 
you know. Um, I was thinking about this example right here as well. Like, like with myself, like um, I was school on quarantine. I could have easily say, hey, can somebody do the class? No, I want to do the work. I want to go and teach my people. I want to build up my people. I want to encourage my people. That's why I elected to continue to do it. They gave us another avenue to continue to do it. Get this black backdrop and you still could do the work. All right. Um, Lamentations verse. No, that's good on that one. Let's go to. Um, go to uh, Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10. Sirach 2 and 10. Chapter two and verse ten. Let's see. All right. Look at the no. I'm sorry. It's verse nine. And you know what? I'm reading nine and ten. Um, Sirach chapter two and verse nine. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. That's what we're supposed to hope for everlasting joy and mercy. We want the most our mercy. All right. Um, verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. Or did abide in his fear and was forsaken. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him. So look. We got to make sure that we'll ready all the time every time like like we give it a chance Israel you ready always ready always do ready for what to defend the gospel to support the weak all these different things our forefathers did that's who we supposed to be today all right so we have to examine ourselves and see what type of person am I really trying to be I want to support rather than my uh, uh, toe or finger you want to support, you want to help, you want to build, you want to see these things come to pass, all right, you want the kingdom to come, uh, Psalms 22 and 4, Psalms 22 and 4, uh, let's see, what is it, the book of Psalms chapter 22 and verse Uh, four. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. You see, they cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. It's the same way we're supposed to be when it comes to building up ourselves, being on one mind, one accord, trusting in the Lord. All right, continue to build up your faith, Israel. Continue to build up your faith. Um, Titus 1 and 15. Titus 1 and 15. And we got one more after this. Titus 1 and 15. Let's see, I'm going to start at 15 or 14. I'm going to start at um, Titus 1 and 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But, but even their minds are, I got to read that again. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. So you don't want to be like that. You know, that, that nothing's pure to you. Your mind is, and your conscience is defiled. Let's see what's supposed to be pure to you. And you're supposed to understand these things. Proverbs 30 and 5. Thirty and verse five. Uh, let's see. Let me 
rest of the glasses, y'all. Uh, Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. You see? So he is a shield to them that put their trust in him. All right? So every word is supposed to be pure to you. All right? Um, Psalms 12 and 6 real quick. Psalm chapter 12. And verse 6. Psalm chapter 12 and verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. So that's why if, if, if it's not pure to you, even your conscience is defiled. Look, well, the word is plain. It tells us how to operate and how to carry ourselves. All right. Um, last one. Um, about this mercy real quick. Um, Wisdom of Solomon uh, 3 and 9. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints and he had care for his elect so that's why you got to put your trust in him you have to put your trust in him all right remember um christ gave that parable about if your son asks you for a gift for a fish would you give him a stone if he asks you for you know um get the other ones would you give him a serpent? All these type of different things, just the same way the Most High God will give you the Holy Ghost that um, is those who ask for it. Hey, one more real quick. Go to uh, Romans. Romans chapter 15 and verse 1. Romans 15 and 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. You see, told you it's not about you. Scriptures constantly remind you that. That's why we have to constantly read these things, right? Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good, for he for his good to edification. So we're supposed to edify one another, help build each other up, right? That's your job. If you're not doing it, you got to examine yourself. Verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we should, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. All right, so I'm going to end it right there. All right, Israel. So, hey, what are we supposed to do? Continue to read, study, apply. Read, study, apply. Read, study, apply. Inquire with your leadership. Talk with your leadership. Build a bond with your leadership. All right? Have a good name. Have a good reputation with those around you. That you follow instructions. That you do those things that are pleasing to the Most High God. All right? Hey, because like I say, if you're without, how can you do those things? You know, how can you love your neighbor as yourself? How can you admonish them? You see? All right, so, hey, obey, obey them that have rule over you in the Lord. How can you follow these scriptures? They wouldn't apply to you. But if they do apply to you, follow them. All right, Israel. Hey, that's all I got. I'm um, Officer Mike out of Houston Camp. Hey. Go support. You got the Booster Club, okay? You got um, several different things. Hey, you got the, the Matthew Project going on, man. Hey, support all the things that we're doing, all right? Um, and join us. Join us, all right? Go to our website, all right? IsraelUnite.org, all right? And hey, 
plenty of content on there. Build up your faith to join a congregation near you. All right, and with that, I say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Have a blessed day, Israel.